WCT presents the best of World Championship Tennis. Stone for World Championship Tennis. In every sport, there are special moments, moments which stand out as classics, moments which demand that special effort that separates the champion from the rest. Today on the Best of WCT, we'll see some of those moments when superb athletes gave their very best. We'll be right back with highlights of the world's greatest tennis players as they gave the performances necessary to become champions. Stay tuned. Sixty million tennis players in the world. Some are very, very good. Some are not so good. If you reach the pinnacle of tennis success, some are just beginning. Tennis players come in all ages, sizes, and manner of dress. From these millions, some 60,000 claim the distinction of being tennis professionals. The vast majority of these earn a living as teaching pros. But for a few, the game itself is their job. The racket and balls are tools. The 78 by 27 foot rectangle is the office. Their home is the road. They are called touring pros. And there are about 240. The 1977 WCT invited 23 of the best to compete in the World Series of Tennis. 23 that would play around the world. The World Series of Tennis was finishing in Monte Carlo on Sunday and playing here in Houston on Tuesday. A 108-day odyssey of airports and hotels and tennis. Twelve tournaments, nine different champions. After 23,800 miles, matches in six countries, the eight survivors got to hear words like these. Hi, Jimmy. Welcome to Dallas. Every major city, like every human being, has its own face. Those features that make a place Dallas, not London or Paris. Dallas is like an attractive woman, slightly different to everyone she touches. To some, this city means commerce, to others, football, insurance, climate, oil. It's a metropolis whose tradition is just being established, a city whose best years are still in the future, a city whose face is young and often very beautiful. And for one week each May, Dallas becomes the end of the tennis rainbow, and a pot of gold always awaits one man. Of the major championships, Wimbledon celebrated its centennial in 1977. The U.S. Open was 96 years old. The French turned 52 this year. But the World Championship of Tennis was still literally in short pants. 1977 marked the seventh year of the Dallas Finals. But already, Dallas has joined London, Paris, Forest Hills as one of the capitals of tennis. Look at the crowd, the faces, the spectacle, and you know this is Dallas. Now, it's down to the final eight. Here in Dallas, for the seventh annual World Championship of Tennis. Jim 
Jimmy Connors entered the quarterfinal against Adriano Panata, top seeded. The press had chosen him to win it all. His fellow pros picked him. But such selections carry no guarantees. Of the six previous top seeds, only three won. But the ghosts of finals past would not haunt Jimmy Connors this evening. This was to be Adriano Panata's private nightmare. Connors methodically amputated the various parts of Panata's game. The surgery was clean and quick. Connors moved down to the semifinals in straight sets. the Coliseum was transformed into a theater in the round for a quarterfinal melodrama in four acts, starring Eli Nastasi, for whom all tennis courts are a stage, and Fast Eddie Ditz, who's always played a supporting role in matches against Nastasi. But this night, the script would change dramatically. After two sets, the match was even. But then Dibbs took over his leading man, rushing the net, daring Nastasi to pass him and refusing to be unnerved by the usual assortment of Nastasi antics. Whenever Nasty plays, there are in reality two matches in progress at once, one in the court and one in Nastasi's own private theater. And this night, the latter seemed fit for scripting by Shakespeare. Tomorrow and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage. And then he's heard no more. The curtain fell in a major upset. Dibbs had beaten Nastasi for the first time. Thursday's schedule called for the last two quarterfinal matches. For two sets, Poland's number one player, Wojtek Fiebeck, could do no wrong. And beat his Cherylitis, his acrobatics only seemed to get him further behind. But when the momentum changed, it changed for good. Only twice in the history of these finals that a player lost the first two sets and rallied to win. The last to do it was Rod Laver in 1972. Then came Gerolitis' astonishing comeback. 1-6, 3-6, The last of the quarters bridged the tennis generation gap. 35-year-old Cliff Drysdale had never won a set from 26-year-old Dick Stockton, much less a match in the three times they'd met previously. The first streak was broken, the latter continued. Stockton seemed to be coasting with one set in the bag and a 5-2 lead in set two when Drysdale discovered the fountain of youth. He forced that set to the 13-point tiebreaker and won. But Drysdale's magic disappeared and Stockton regained control, winning a third set tiebreaker. As the match eased past midnight, the night had become extremely long for some of the fans and for a pair of 35-year-old legs. Stockton closed it out, 6-2. The field had been reduced to four. For the first time in 37 years, all four semifinalists in a major championship were American. First semifinal match Friday, Eddie Dibbs had a plan. For years, he'd seen Jimmy Connors gun down opponents with his double-barreled backhand. Dibbs was determined to avoid that fate. His strategy called for him to continually hit the Connors' forehand. Over and over, he probed the supposedly weaker shot. 
During one stretch, Dibbs forced Connors to hit 25 forehands out of 27 shots. The scheme was well conceived and well executed, and it worked for a while. But Dibbs persevered, breaking Connors' serve early in each of the first two sets. Each time, Connors quickly broke back, winning 6-4, 7-5. Coming back from two sets down against any professional is a monumental task. Against red-hot Jimmy Connors with his sights fixed squarely in the championship trophy, it would have taken a miracle. Eddie Dibbs' plan didn't include any miracles. His strategy failed in straight sets. the semifinal, Dick Stockton and Vitas Gerolaitis also had plans, the same plan. Attack. This struggle would consume three hours, 20 minutes. There would be 347 total points. Gerolaitis would win 174, Stockton 173. Tied at one set each, the third set reached the tiebreaker. Gerolaitis won. The crowd, which again had broken the single night attendance record, seemed certain it had witnessed a turning point. They were wrong. Stockton evened the match by winning the fourth set, and early in the fifth set, after 48 games, the players were dead even at two sets each. Two games each. Each had won 24 games. Something someone had to give. It would be Gerolaitis. Stockton broke Gerolaitis' serve and moments later captured the marathon. After the match, Gerolaitis would admit, not alibi, admit that a pulled muscle had bothered him. Stockton would credit his win not to his concentration or his forehand or his stamina, none of the usual reasons for victory. Stockton conceded that his edge this evening came from the hometown crowd. The Dallas final had narrowed to two players. One match for all that money, all that prestige. The best of WCT returns right after this. Champion for 77. If I lose, I'll come back and try again. If I were to win that last minute, would be probably a moment I'll never forget in my life. Bye. Stockton and Jimmy Connors first met 15 years ago at a 12 and under tournament in Coral Gables, Florida. Stockton won. As professionals, they'd faced each other six times prior to 1977. Connors had won them all. But on this season's World Series of Tennis Tour, Stockton outdueled Connors in five sets for the INA US Pro Indoor title in Philadelphia. Three weeks later, Stockton beat him again in Toronto when Connors retired because of a knee injury. Stockton had always worn the promise of tennis greatness like a coat bought intentionally large in the belief that the child would certainly grow into it. This season, Dick Stockton caught up with his future. Three WCT titles, the WCT World Doubles Crown with VJ Omnitrage, $220,000 earned in four months. Now he was matching the world's number one ranked player stroke for stroke with one of the world's most coveted titles at stake. A dozen games they traded blasts. Only one of the 12 games even got the deuce. No one broke. The first set reached the tiebreaker. Connors had taken a 5-4 lead in the tiebreaker and needed only to win his two serves for a first set victory. But Stockton saved the point with a superb half volley and suddenly the play turned strangely cautious. Both players trying harder not to lose the point than to win it. Caution is not Jimmy Connors' game. The cream puff forehand caught the net. The tiebreaker was even at five points each. Stockton also took the next point to reach set point and made a lunging shoe top volley that Connors could not return. Stockton had done what Panata and Dibbs had been unable to do. He had taken a set from Jimmy Connors. One of 
the factors that elevates the great tennis player above the very good ones is the manner in which they react to adversity. Losing a tiebreaker frustrates most players. They begin feeling for the ball. Their games become defensive. They do make fewer errors, but they also hit fewer winners. They play tentatively, hoping for something to happen. But Jimmy Connors is not one of them. Adversity seems to annoy Connors, at times infuriates him. He knows only one style, attack. Every shot is played with ferocity, every game is for table stakes. Jimmy Connors is many things as a player, but delicate is not one of them. And there was nothing delicate about what he did to Dick Stockton in the second set. Stockton's serve in game two and again in game six. Suddenly the match was even. Every championship in every sport reaches this point. A few moments in which the title, the cup, the cash will be won or lost. Entering the third set, everyone seemed to know a turning point was near. That set began the way the second set ended. Connors was roaring, drilling backhands, blanketing the baseline, hitting every shot as though it were his last. He broke Stockton's serve immediately. For Stockton, the time had come to make a stand. He needed a service break to even the set. The opportunity came in the fourth game. But Connors, backed into a corner, fought back to Deuce. Stockton gained the advantage a second time, but again Connors was equal to the challenge, eventually serving out game four. A pair of chances had come and gone for Dick Stockton, but more chances would come during Connors' next serve. After Stockton had held serve to narrow Connors' lead to 3-2, he again forced the lefty to break point. Just one winner or one Connors' error, and the crucial third set would be tied. But Connors rallied to Deuce and then passed out some thank yous. Again, Stockton gained the advantage, but Connors staved off a break with a twisting serve to Stockton's backhand. Undaunted, Stockton put Connors on the hook for a third time in game six. Remarkably, Connors wiggled off again. In games four and six of the third set, opportunity had knocked five times for Stockton. Five break points. But each time Connors answered, opportunity would not knock again. Connors served out the set. As the fourth set started, Stockton was entering his tenth set of tennis in the last two and a half days. The pace, the lack of rest, Connor's constant pressure, all of them and more had brought Stockton to the brink of defeat. Don't go away. We'll be back with more of the best of WCT. Breaking Connor's serve is deceivingly difficult. While he doesn't possess one of those cannonball serves, neither does he make many service errors. His accuracy during these finals was uncanny. In the three matches, 74% of Connor's first serves were in. Even with Stockton pressing for a break, Connor's held with ease four straight times. In those four games, Stockton won a total of two points. When Connors held in game eight, it marked the 26th consecutive time he'd won his serve, dating back to the middle of his semifinal match against Eddie Diz. Connors led 5-3. The World Championship of Tennis had become a matter of time. After all the airports and hotels and months of tournaments, all the triumphs and defeats had come down to this point. Thank you, Mike. Tell 
I won't tell him, but you can. And then there was one. One left from all the millions, thousands, hundreds, dozens of players. One man who had conquered this world. Championship tennis. Superb athletes, special people, champions all. We hope you enjoyed the show and that you'll plan to join us next time for more of the best of WCT. This has been a feature presentation of World Championship Tennis.